In this video I'll be showing you how to fix Harry Potter in the Quidditch World Cup for modern day PCs. This video is for educational purposes only. This fix is brought to you today by myself and the rest of my team also known as Fix Enhancers. The items included in the fix are higher resolutions, higher aspect ratios, custom frame rate, custom field of view, a frame rate counter and window mode. First things first, getting Quidditch World Cup to work on a modern day PC. So you can install the game via the disc perfectly fine, however if you try and then run it from the disc you'll be greeted with a pop up message that basically says you don't have admin rights in order to be able to play the game. This is due to a DRM, also known as Digital Rights Management, inside of the game known as Safe Disk. Safe Disk is no longer supported on modern day Windows. Therefore, the only way to be able to play Quidditch World Cup anymore on PC is to use a no CD crack. Due to legal reasons, I cannot direct you or provide you with this. This is down to the end user to deal with themselves. Also want to add that you will need a no CD crack anyway in order to be able to use our fix. Before you can use our fix, you will need to have booted up the game at least once and gone inside of the video options. Once you're inside of the video options you'll need to set the resolution down to 640 by 480 and I also recommend while you're here that you change the level of detail up to 32 bit instead of 16 bit. Also the other settings you might as well put on high if they're not already on this by default while you're here. Once you've done all that and pressed enter and accepted those changes you can then quit the game. Something I need to quickly go over before we get into the fix is relating to our fixes going forwards. So some browsers and antivirus softwares might potentially flag up our fixes. Now to explain in an English way why this might happen, this is due to the fact that our fixes use something called hooks. What we do is we hook inside of the exe files for the games and then we can change the code inside of them. This is effectively how we're able to change the code inside of the exe file which then works inside of our dol file to allow you to use custom settings within the game. Of course the normal average user is not supposed to be using hooks within windows and this is why some antivirus softwares and browsers can get a little touchy about this. There is nothing actually wrong with any of these fixes these are all just false flags. If you come down to the first link down in the description of the pinned comment, it will take you to this website here. This is GitHub. This is where we're hosting all of our game fixes going forwards. And this is the one for Quidditch World Cup. All you simply have to do here is where it says Harry Potter and the Quidditch World Cup fix.zip. You just simply click on that and download it and save it onto your PC somewhere. So once you've saved the Quidditch World Cup fix file on your PC somewhere, you're going to need to put it inside the game's install area. So I'm going to go through that via the desktop. So what I've done here on my desktop is I've created a Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup fixed folder just here and then inside of it I've got the downloaded file right here which is a zip file all you have to do is simply right click this file and then click extract all what this will do is it will extract all the contents of that zip file into a folder like it has done right here for me and then going inside of that folder to the contents you will get these three files right here you'll have a d3d8.dol file a d3.d8ini file and a readme file the readme file is just explaining how the fix works and everything about it so if you want to read that feel free the two files that we're interested in are the d3d8.dol file and the d3d8.ini file. All you need to do is either do a control C and a control V into your Quidditch World Cup install area or you can drag and drop the files into your Quidditch World Cup install area instead. So now that we have both of these files in here we want to open up the d3d8.ini file. So these are all the options inside the ini file. I'm going to go through them one by one. First option is max frame rate. So by default Quidditch World Cup actually doesn't have a frame rate cap so the game normally runs at a thousand frames which of course is not very good for the PC and also makes the game run a bit sluggish. So what we've done here is added in a frame rate cap for the game. We've tested up to 120 frames on this game and it's worked absolutely fine. I can't promise if you go above 120 it's going to be perfectly fine. So people will have to play around with higher frame rates and see what happens. All you have to do is simply just put in the number that you wish to use for your frame rate. So in my case I use 120 frames so that's why I have 120 there on the left hand side. Next option FPS limit mode. So you can either put a 1 or a 2 here. For this game I find that 2 is the best option to use for Quidditch World Cup. On one you sometimes have a couple of crashing issues that I've seen in the past so I recommend everyone stays on two for this. Display FPS counter. This of course displays an FPS counter in the top left hand corner of the screen while you're playing the game. If you wish to turn this on and see it then just simply change this zero to a one. This next option is used to fix full screen issues with DirectX 8 games. I always recommend that you always turn this on anyway for all DirectX 8 games so I suggest that everybody keeps this option turned on so change it from a zero to a one if it is at zero. If you are playing in windowed mode you cannot turn this option on or else it's going to cause trouble. So if you are playing in windowed mode which I'll be covering a little bit later on then you will need to change this to a zero if it's at one. Next option FAV field of view. By default the game uses 114 field of view. I've done a bit of testing with Quidditch World Cup now with higher field of views. The best option that I found is 120. If you do not wish to change field of view at all and just leave it at the default one that the game has just keep this at zero on the left hand side. Next 
next option is windowed mode of course if you want to play the game in a windowed mode rather than full screen then all you have to do is change this left hand number from 0 to 1 full screen resolution so this will allow you to change the resolution in the game to what you wish to use in the case of what I have on the left I have the number 4 this is because I'm playing the game at 4k which is 3840 by 2160 however if you want to play at a different resolution such as 1920 by 1080 then you simply change this 4 to a 2 and then finally full screen aspect ratio by default we've set the aspect ratio of the game to 1 which is 16 by 9 this is what most people will be using however if you wish to use a higher aspect ratio then there are numbers on the right hand side as you can see you just change that one to whatever number you wish to use once you put in all the settings that you want to use you either press ctrl s on your keyboard or alternatively you can come up click file and then save if you were to now go and boot up the game you should notice that you have a higher resolution aspect ratio as well as all the other options that you set earlier on next i want to go over how you can play co-op in this game you can play local co-op in this game whether you were a gamepad and a keyboard and mouse or two keyboard and mice however there is a way to also play this game online co-op but you will need an external program in order to do this i will link this program down in the description as well as the pinned comment for you all this program is called parsec basically parsec allows you to go and control another pc so if you had another friend and you wanted to play quidditch world cup together then it means that that person could set up the game of quidditch world cup and then the other person could jump onto their pc with a controller for example on their pc and start playing quidditch world cup with them in a split screen kind of co-op way this is similar to how this is done inside of harry potter and the goblet of fire the last thing i want to cover which i did cover in my old video for quidditch world cups fix which i will be showing a little bit more after this is the developer console for the game so thanks to spectral there is actually a developer console that you can use within quidditch world cup however i need to make it clear that as it stands you cannot use this developer console with our fix due to the fact that two of the files that are used for this and our fix are identical and as a result they conflict with each other so if you wish to use the console then you're going to have to remove our fix from the quidditch world cup install location in order to use the console as it currently stands if potentially in the future spectral wants to get in touch with us and maybe we can make it compatible with our fix as well so that both of these can work together then of course we are totally open to this idea however as it currently stands if you use our fix you are not able to use this console unless you remove our fix files from the quidditch world cup install area so huge shout out to spectral for actually being able to get the dev console to work within quidditch world cup so i will leave a link down in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can all go and get this but what this will do is it will take you to this site here this is the site of the github location for where spectral has put this up all you need to do is simply come down here to where it says d3d8.zip and click on it and then you can download it and save it to your pc all you need to do then is open up the zip file that it comes with and drag and drop over the d3d8 file over into your quidditch world cup install location and once you've done that if you then launch quidditch world cup and press the teal key on your keyboard this will then bring up the dev menu there are multiple commands that you can use within this dev console i will leave a link down in the description and the pinned comment that will take you to a page again created by spectral which goes through every single command that the console can use also going to showcase in the video here some of the main ones that you can use and i will also write down the main ones down in the description that i think people will probably want to use such as unlocking all the wizard cards within the game also unlocking the quidditch world cup straight away rather than having to play the whole of the hogwarts section to unlock that and also unlocking the different difficulties within the game as well so you can go straight to the hardest difficulty right away and the last thing i want to cover inside of this tutorial is a new system that we're putting in for all of our fixes going forward which is fix forms so if you come to the link down in the description it will take you to this website here this is basically our form where we leave this here for you guys to give us feedback on the fixes so any feedback that you have regarding the fix at all any bugs encountered etc then you can leave them here and submit it to us and then it means we can easily collect all this data in one place so if you do fill out a feedback form for us it will help us out a lot otherwise that's all there is to this video i hope you guys found it useful if you have any questions regarding the game at all or get stuck then feel free to leave a comment and i'll try and get back to you as soon as i can so if you missed any of the other pc fix videos i have a link down in the description of the pinned comment to the playlist for all of that otherwise i hope you guys found the video useful and i'll see you all in the next fix video very soon